In this lesson, we're going to create our dashboard page and we're going to do a lot of building. We'll use all three of our blocks, dynamic, static, and container. And we'll even add in graphs, lists, and other things. So you ready? Let's start. Here we are on our dashboard page. Right away, I want to reference the original application that we're going to be looking to create, which is right here. So we have this beautiful application. And this application is using a static block up here to display this banner. We're using our block here to show data for the welcome back. And then this string of text will say the logged in user's name. So in this case, on the front end, when the user sees it, it will say, welcome back, JJ. And then we have our quick links blocks here. And this will direct our user to each of the core areas around your application. And for that, it's inventory, sales, purchase orders, and suppliers. Finally, we'll go down here and we'll use a container block. And within the container block, We'll set up a table block here containing all of our inventory. Then we'll go over to orders and we'll use set up another table block for all of our sales orders. And then we'll go to reporting and we'll build some graphs together. We'll build graphs that show revenue by customer, inventory levels, and then a graph that shows all the revenue by sales rep that will be only visible to our warehouse managers because it's sensitive data and we want admin like permissions to only see this data. So let's make it happen. Here we are back on our application. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and actually delete this block here. From there, I'm gonna go and add a new block. I'm gonna to go to static, show you a little bit of a cheat code here. We're gonna to go to hero and do the hero call to action. From there, we're gonna actually get rid of all this data here, including the image down here and the button. And then we're gonna go and add a background image. And that is gonna be the same background image that you can find here also include access to that background image in resources for this lesson. And it's going to also be found in the template if you access that as well. Now that we have our banner set up for our block, we're going to be able to reuse this on many different pages. In fact, let me just show you how to quickly do that now because it's so easy. We're going to go to copy. We're going to go to the app that we're using. And we're going to just go through and copy it to all of the pages. So we're going to go products, details, order items, and we're going to go through the list and some of these pages we might not keep, but this just makes it so that we have a consistent header for all of our pages to keep everything looking nice and neat. And now we don't have to worry about building that block ever again. Now, beyond that, let's go to our quick links. Quick links again is another static block. And if you click on the content area, you can choose a variety of methods to showcase this data. So for the first thing I want to do is I want to make these vertical cards. I like to have the image above there. Now, once I've set up the vertical cards, I can go in and configure the links. Now you can see the links down here. It's projects, clients, invoices, and files. And we are going to keep four of them, but I'm going to click into each one and I'm going to change them for my needs. So inventory is going to be inventory. I'm going to click on the icon and see a list there. And I actually want a subtitle. I'm going to say view all of your inventory. And then for the next one, I'm going to go to clients and this is going to be updated to sales. And let's find some kind of money icon here. Money will be good. And then subtitle, view all of your recent sales. And we'll change this to open the page and we'll go to our sales page. Now we haven't really configured that yet. So we'll start with our sales orders right there. That should be the proper page. Beyond that, let's go to invoices. I'm gonna update this to purchase orders and update here. View your recent purchase orders. And then for this one, we're going to again make a something that shows like a lot of things are being created here. I'll go down to finance and just something like, let's see, what do we got? And this is really arbitrary. It could be anything that you think might be best for your application. We'll just go with this one for now. And then finally, files, we're going to turn this into suppliers. We're going to add this and it says, vendors we order from and then this one if we have some kind of truck icon that'd be great and again go to the page and suppliers right there i actually think i forgot to do that for the purchase order so i'm going to go back here open page purchase orders and then finally once that's clicked go back to inventory same thing open page inventory and in this case what do we got products is the page name currently all right, so we now have our quick links go into each of these pages and a really nice structure here. So I'm really liking that. 
The next thing up is we need to add our container block so we can start housing all the relevant information in the right place. And again, our dashboard place is the main place that we send all of our users to after they sign up or log in. So we want this to be a key place where we can navigate users to very quickly or see the data that they need to see in a more recent prioritized way. So I'm going to go to add block. After add block, I'm going to container and I go tab container. And at the tab container level here, I'm going to go in and start to customize these containers. So it's going to be inventory. Try to keep the same icons now that we've already set those. Sales and reporting. And we're going to choose some kind of graph icon for that. All right, so now we have our container set up. Let's go back to inventory. And we're going to create a new block here. So I'm going to click here. And I, it's going to be a dynamic block because we got to show all of the data from our inventory table in the database. We want to show it here. And again, we want to use a table block here. So we're going to go, there's a table block here. You can also find the table block here. So I'm going to bring the table block in. And right away, it does its best to auto map as much as possible. But we are going to have to go through and change this for our own styles. Right away, you'll see that it comes with the ability to add new records or add new inventory to search and filter. In this case, we don't actually want any of that functionality right now. We're going to simplify it and just offer the table. So after I map this, we need to go to content to turn that off. But first, we need to map this data. And we need to map it to the data that we want to show here, which is inventory. So I'm going to search inventory, and which is products. And that's going to start to bring in all the products here. And it's auto mapped in the fields for us, doing as much work as possible in a smart way. Beyond that, I'm going to go and I'm going to turn off the search bar and I'm going to turn off the filters and then I'm going to go to action buttons and I'm going to delete that button. So now we have that table and it's just the table itself. Now that we have this table configured from a design point of view, let's configure the content that we want to see in this table. So we have all these different fields that we can see. And you can also drag the fields around. And as you do that, it changes the order that is seen in the table. And so right now, I need to make sure that I am mapping the data that I want to show to the proper field types as well. And the first thing I want to show is the product image. So that will be an attachment or a file. And this is going to be our image. And we want the image to show there. And I don't actually want any icons. So we'll have it like that except that's not coming through the way I want it. Let's go to picture, let's go to image, image, there we go. So as I originally mapped it to file, it shows it as what, how you might want to see a file. But in this case, it's really an image and now it will show it as an image. And so that's why it's so important for you to figure out the proper mapping field because depending on the way that you use your field types here will be the way that your data is showcased in software. I'm going to delete an icon here and I'm just going to update this to product image. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this so it's not as wide here, maybe just for about there. And for the product image itself, I'm going to go right in here and I can choose a lot of different options here if I want to change anything, but I think that's fine for now. So if we wanted to change any of the, inf the way that the image is displayed, we can use that paintbrush icon there. Beyond that, let's go over here and we're going to set up text. And this is going to be product name. And this is going to be product name. And we're going to get rid of that icon there. So that's looking good. Let's make it a little bit wider here to make sure that the full name comes through. And we'll go over here and we'll say purchase price. Purchase price. We'll again remove that icon. We can make this a little smaller. And we can say purchase price. All right, coming together nicely. That should be good. Next thing up is sales price. Let's see, we've already have that mapped, but we will try and pull it back here. Sales price right here, where is it? Ah, it wouldn't map it because the sales price is text. And right now it's as a URL. So let's switch that to text and let's go to sales. Let's go to price, where is it? Sell price, there it is. Sell price. And we'll move that icon again. We'll bring that a little bit closer there. And then we'll go over here and we'll go up here to text and it's going to be units sold. You see how quick this can be once you get in a rhythm of knowing what field types to use and where the data is coming from. Finally, here we'll go back to text and we'll say available. 
unit available. Get rid of that icon and then bring it in a little bit more. And it's starting to look pretty good here. I like it. Let's see what else we can do. I want to make sure that each, all of this stays on the same area. So I can just bring this in a little bit here. That's good. Now that's looking pretty good. I do want to do another thing. I want to add a gray background to this table here. For that, I'm going to go to Styles, and I'm going to go to Column Header, and I'm going to change this background color right there. So let me just grab that color real quick. And in this case, it's going to be our F5 color. And now that looks real nice. And you can see that there's some area up here. And so I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to go to Styles, Block, and I'm just going to get rid of some of that padding, as I don't need that full padding there. We'll just do a small padding there and small padding there. And now with the styles and our table, we have this configured properly and it's starting to look really good. So I'm gonna stop the lesson here for part one. In part two, we'll continue with our sales and reporting and keep going. Otherwise, I hope you learned a ton. Our app is starting to look really good. It's really exciting. I'll see you in the next lesson where we can finish off this dashboard page. See you there.